What's up and welcome to another edition of Locked On NBA, the biggest stories with the local experts. I'm your host, Jackson Gatlin, also host of Locked On Rockets right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Today, we'll be chatting with Kuka Hill from Locked On Pistons as Sadiq Bay has a monster night, a 50-piece for Bay. Also, Cade Cunningham, what are his chances at winning Rookie of the Year? Can he catch Evan Mobley, who appears to be the away front runner for the award? But first, a quick message from our friends over at Bet Online, because look, it's that time of year. We got college basketball, March Madness in full swing, and Bet Online has you covered from all the latest odds, contests, and player props. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your sports betting needs and info. Bet Online remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And hey, it's not just basketball, right? Bet Online is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action available to you. Bet Online, it's where the game starts. Joining us now is Kuka Hill from Locked On Pistons. You can follow on Twitter, the Bird app, at Kuka Hill. Koo, we're going to talk a little bit about Cade Cunningham, but first we got to talk about Sadiq Bey and his monster night, the 50-piece that he had, 51 points, 9 boards, 4 assists, 3 steals, 17 of 27 shooting. How high did Sadiq Bey's stock skyrocket after this 50-piece, Koo? It, you know, it actually was pretty crazy because I had just got done recording talking about how he had been struggling over the last five games. And it was like, okay, let's see what it looks like. How long is it going to take him to get out of the slump? What's it going to look like when he gets out of the slump? Is he going to let that, you know, uh, that slump carry over to the end of the season? And then he drops 51 points. And it's like, oh, okay, what the hell just happened there? Um, but, you know, it his stock had been steadily increasing since the first 20 games of the season because he has just been flat out like nothing short of excellent for the Pistons since like game 24 or something. Uh, he was actively pretty bad in the first 24 games. But ever since then, he's averaging like 20 points on like average efficiency from the field uh, and playing pretty average. I mean, I'd say average defense, but just giving the Pistons a lot offensively in this 51-point game, I, I feel like it meant a lot for him, obviously. It did a lot for the team because the team needed something like this. And, you know, it definitely – probably feels like it was a big reward for him for how he's been playing the last like 30 or so games for the Pistons. Pretty nice to have, you know, give something for the team to kind of rally around, right? That kind of big performance, that kind of thing. But uh, Koo, it, it kind of feels like right now with the rookie of the year race, uh, it feels like it's tightening up maybe a little bit as we're nearing the end of the season, but, and you can push back on this if you want to, but right now for me and try, I'm, I cover Jalen Green as well. And so it, it feels like, it feels like it's kind of Evan Mobley's award to lose at, at this point going into the tail end of the season. Do you think that Cade, you know, has a chance to catch Mobley? And, and what do you think he needs to do to sway voters in his favor during this last little stint of the season? So, you know, me and a bunch of other Pistons fans and everyone in the Pistons community, there's a lot of trolling that goes along. There's a lot of fun that goes along. But all joking aside this rookie class is going to be incredibly deep. Like we're talking about Evan Mobley. We didn't bring up Scotty Barnes. Who's been playing extraordinary. We got, you know, Franz Wagner, who doesn't get brought up a lot. Josh Giddy, Jalen green, obviously like your guy, Cade, like this is going to be a really deep draft class. So I just want to say that out the way first, but I feel like Cade, I feel like Cade is the best rookie in this class. I think he, 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 I, I really do feel like he clearly is the best rookie in the draft, but I don't think that he's, I think the team record is going to hold him back. I think the fact that he struggled the first like eight or nine games of the season coming off an injury is going to hold him back. And the fact that Evan Mobley has been on consistently contributing to a playoff team uh, and how great he is defensively already, I think that's really just going to carry him over because of how consistent he's been all year. I don't think he's had the same type of highs as other players have had, uh, but I feel like he's obviously been the most consistent one for a playoff team. So I, I think Cade has been making a hard push. He's been trying to make this push for Rookie of the Year, and it'll be interesting to see if he does end up making enough of a push to take it. Uh, but I think, obviously, Evan Mobley is the favorite right now, uh, and I think Cade's going to have to... Honestly, I feel like even if Cade does stuff to end of the season where he, I feel like he deserves it, I feel like the win-loss record will pretty much keep it from him uh, because it's kind of hard for voters across the nation to de to deny a guy who's playing this well defensively and this good, to, uh, this good as a rookie for a team that's could be like top five in the East. So I feel like no matter what Cade does, probably it's going to be Evan Mobley's. And that's not to take anything away from him. He'll probably deserve it, but it, Cade has a chance. It's just, it's, it's a hard one. 
Who do you think is going to finish in, in, in if, if we've got Mobley and Cade in, in there, who do you think is going to be the third rookie to be a finalist, you know, one of the final three for the award? I, I think it has to be Scotty Barnes at this point, specifically how he's been playing as of late. Uh, like, I, I know he'd been playing really well throughout the season, but specifically over the last few weeks, I've been seeing his numbers get floated around on, on, on my Twitter feed uh, and seeing what he's been doing. He's been playing really, really well. Uh, so I think he's going to be up there. I think Franz Wagner probably has a case for that as well. I feel like he's kind of going under the radar a little bit. Uh, he was talked about a little bit at the beginning of the season, but I feel like people just got like bored of him or something. Uh, so I feel like he'll be in the conversation there. Um, and I feel like Jalen Green, your guy, has been playing pretty well since the All-Star break too. Uh, and he's been getting better and better as the seasons went on. But I think if I had to pick one, I think it has to be Scotty Barnes. I think those three guys, as far as the rookie of the year race, not where they'll finish as pros or who's the better rookie as of yet. I think th for just rookie of the year, I think it's a tier one of probably Mobley, Cade, and Scotty. And then after that, it goes Franz with Jalen Green and a few other guys that have also been playing pretty well across the league. Probably safe to maybe throw Josh Giddy into that mix yeah, yeah, as Josh well. Yeah, Josh Giddy. Josh Giddy. Um, now, now, Koo, another fixture of this Detroit Pistons team has been Jeremy Grant, right? And we heard his name kind of tossed around in some, you know, rumors around the trade deadline. Has he done anything, you know, post All-Star break that makes you think that maybe he's a possible, like, future long-term fixture for this Pistons team? Or is this going to be a situation where the Pistons are looking to maybe unload him? Not, ne not necessarily at the next earliest possible convenience, but, you know, does he have a long-term fit in Detroit? I hope not. That that I, I I hope he doesn't. But I I would be lying to sit here and say that he hasn't he hasn't tr he's tried to take a step back since the All Star break since the deadline. He's tried to let K take over as his team, and he's been he's done a pretty decent job at it. Uh, he just scored forty points like the other night. I don't know how long ago it'll be when this published, like probably three days ago, whatever the last game the Pistons played. Um, he just dropped forty points, so he has really good nights. And when he's able to step back and accept being a third piece or third role guy. Whatever, he's a pretty damn good player, and that's why a lot of contenders want him. However, I have serious questions about whether he actually is going to accept that role full-time moving forward for a team like the Pistons. I have serious questions. He, he's a natural – he tries to move the ball recently since the All-Star break, but he's a guy who just – that's not natural to him. He wants to take grab the ball. He kind of wants to do his own thing with it now uh, since coming to Detroit, and that kind of stops ball moving and can stagnate the offense. I really don't like that. I think the Pistons need to just get a roster full of guys who are high IQ players and are they're not probably not going to out talent people, but they'll you know play better basketball. They'll play have high IQ plays, move the ball, hit the open guy. I feel like they need as many guys as that possible. And also the biggest reason, I really don't think the Pistons should pay him that four year, one hundred twelve million dollar extension that he wants uh, for the role that he's going to be at the Pistons and where the Pistons will be at. So. Um, He's done. He's tried to take a step back. He's tried to play better in the role that the Pistons probably want him to play to where they won't want to, they, they won't feel pressured to move him the next earlier spot. They'll probably feel, okay, if we don't move him, that we'll be I holding him to the trade deadline. But I don't think he's done anything so far. I think the idea should still be to eventually move him before his contract's up. How has Dwayne Casey kind of done with regards to to growing and developing the you know the talent? on this young Pistons team and does he has he given you the confidence that he's going to be you know the the coach for the Pistons moving forward or is that something that you know we should be on the lookout for this upcoming offseason with the Pistons maybe you know looking for a new guy to take the helm so I think Dwayne Casey I've said this many times before I think he's the perfect coach for where they're at right now they're not trying to win and they're just worried about trying to build professionals build character and that kind of thing and the one thing about Dwayne Casey that you can say and if you go back to his Toronto days uh, it, it'll be that he gets guys to play hard for him. Guys believe in him. Guys look up to him. He builds character and he makes guys professional. That's the one good thing you can say about him. So you can never take that from him. Outside of that, everything else is questionable for me. He's not very good with X and O's, in my opinion. He's, his, his, his adjustments throughout a game is very questionable. Um, so I don't think, to, to answer your question, I don't think he'll be the coach when the Pistons are trying to win. I don't think he's going to be fired this offseason. I don't think he's in danger of losing his job. I think what's eventually going to happen, and he just signed an extension, I think all signs are pointing to that after this upcoming season, after this next season, he's going to slowly just fade away into like an advisory role with the Pistons in the front office somewhere, and the Pistons will then sign a guy to take them into that next step of, okay, we're going to try to win now. But for, his, for developing and where they're at right now, I think he's a fine coach where they're at right now because I don't think he's going to be the coach 
when they try to win, whether that's next year or the year after that. Uh, I, I think he's just will eventually find himself fading away a little bit into an advisory role or role in the front office uh, and, and being influenced in the, in the organization while possibly Jerome Allen, who's on the assistant coaching staff for the Pistons steps in and takes that place or possibly someone outside. But I, I, Jerome Allen's a name I've always said to keep an eye on. All right, Koo, before I get you out of here, the one thing, the one saving grace for all the teams sitting at the bottom of the standings, the Pistons, the Magic, the Rockets, is looking forward to the NBA draft lottery, looking forward to the NBA draft. If the Pistons were so lucky as to walk away with the number one overall pick again in this upcoming draft, who do you have number one on your draft board and who would you want to see the Pistons take with the number one overall pick? So I, my listeners all know that I'm not a big draft guy. I'm not a big college guy, but I did just get done recording with Locked On's very own uh, draft dude, uh, Richard, over at Mavs, Dra- at Mavs Draft on Twitter. Uh, so and I've listened to what some people are saying. So if they would get the number one overall pick, it sounds like Jabari Smith would be the move. Troy Rivera seems to be really high on him, a, a lethal shooter who has the tangibles to be a really damn good defender as well. So I think that's probably the pick to go with right there, especially at his position where the Pistons, I feel like, probably have their biggest, maybe not their biggest hole, but one of their holes at his position uh, and definitely with shooting. They desperately need shooting. And for a guy his position in space flight, I think the Pistons would love that. And obviously his potential would be more than that. Uh, Chet Holmgren obviously is, a, is an interesting p- a pick to have there. But for me, I'm, again, I, this is maybe an ignorant of opinion because I'm not – like well versed in draft, I'm not well versed in college, but just from the outside point of view, his weight scares me. And if I had a number one overall pick, I'd I'd probably go with the safer pick at Jabari because that weight, his weight, really does scare me in the home room. Can Cade Cunningham make a push for a rookie of the year? What are the Detroit Pistons going to do in the draft? You're going to have us covered for all of that and more over at Locked On Pistons. Koo, appreciate you stopping by Locked On NBA with me. Thank you for having me, man.